welcome to Plastics to See and why you should be ashamed of your consumer's lifestyle in the Western Kingdom. Did you know that the world is currently in the throes of near certain demise by, our trans by the translucent tide of our plastic overlords? Uh, not really, but plastic pollution is a serious thing, and that's what we're here to do today, to tell us people a little bit about plastic pollution in the ocean. Well, shut up. Well, <coughs> since plastics were first mass produced in the early 1900s, Mankind has seen an astronomical increase in its usage and reliance on plastics. Global production quoted at around 225 million tons a year by Basel, 2009. However, it is now currently estimated at almost 300 million tons a year, just five years after the previous estimate. So, plastics are nothing new to the people of the 21st century. However, plastic pollution is. This relatively new science was introduced in the 1970s, and it has shown how plastics have infiltrated almost every biosphere on the planet, from the abyssal plains of the central oceans, to the shores of our polar regions, and everywhere in between. It's not going away. At least we don't think it will anytime soon. You see, science is yet to determine the true lifespan of plastics. Arguments for their lifespans range from decades to centuries, even millennia. And most of the plastic ever produced remains in the environment to this day. Though, not in the format you might expect. In 2004, Thomson et al. began looking into the composition of coastal sediments and determined that around 30% of the substrate was comprised of tiny and organic polymers. And being the clever gooses that they were, they determined that this plastic must have fragmented from larger plastic debris. This was the first empirical evidence of what they dubbed microplastics. You see, when we throw out their plastics, they begin their life much like this. A large structure. However, over time they are exposed to the stresses of natural weathering processes, principally ultraviolet light, temperature fluxes, and abrasion. So now you're probably wondering, so what's your problem? What do you have against plastics, yeah? You'll best tell me or I'll cut you. Well, let's go to my lab monkey Will for the analysis. Oh, hello Jimmy. Yes, um, we live in a day of com age of consumption where all of our food products themselves are kindly wrapped in plastic bags and wrappers for us just to use, just like our packaging we have here. Today, we consume billions of plastic bags and bottles each year in the United Kingdom alone, so it's quite a bit of an issue. There are many chemicals present in plastics that we know to be harmful to the environment, but the chemicals used to treat plastics such as PCBDs and PCBs used as fire retardants were found by Laubi Secretan et al. in 2013 to be carcinogenic. Lab trials by Han et al. in 2011 found that they disrupt endocrine systems and gene expression in fish, suggesting that there may be long-term genetic consequences to plastic pollutants. And finally, Murhead and et al found them to reduce and even terminate fertility in fish in 2006. These are of concern because of their lipophilic nature, allowing them to be readily absorbed into the tissues of a host. Now despite sounding innocent, the name Nerdle sh should strike fear into your heart, as these small resin pellets are used as the most effective means of transporting pre-manufactured, untreated plastics around the world. Not scared yet? Well, these seemingly harmless pellets were found to be significant sinks for harmful resinous compounds such as PCBs and DDE by Yuki Mato et al. in 2001. DDE, or dichlorodiphenyldichloroethylene, is a derivative of DDT, dichlorodiphenyltrichloroethylene, and has been found to thin eggshells in birds, leading to the failure of the developing embryo, according to Lundholm in 1997. This is important to consider when taking into account that live seabirds and their carcasses around the globe have been found with high concentrations of these contaminants in their tissues. The risks of plastic pollution are not entirely chemical. There are a whole host of physical impacts associated with marine plastics. The most fickle of these are aesthetics. I mean, let's face it, it's pretty ugly. However, there are more pressing matters than a daggy milk bottle spoiling your view. Of course, we have all heard the harrowing tales of marine entanglement, which is estimated to affect up to 136 species. Plastics are a real threat to almost all marine feeding clades, from turtles and seabirds, which ingest large macroplastics, often resulting in impaired digestive function, false cessation, and ultimately starvation. Right down to the microplastic ingestion by filter feeding plankton. 
This is particularly troubling because of the resulting bioaccumulation and magnification through the food chain of these plastics and their associated toxins. This process of accumulation and magnification works by low trophic level organisms such as plankton ingesting a small amount of plastic. A small fish then feeds on several thousand plankton and in turn the plastic they have ingested. Then a larger fish ingests ten or so of those fish, further magnifying the problem until you reach large concentrations in the less adaptable upper trophic levels. An example of which is found just last year in seabirds, which were found with high plastic associated pollutants in their tissues. So where are these plastics coming from, and where do they go when we get rid of them? Well, obviously they originate from us, but the majority of plastic pollution comes from the shipping of nurdles and other assorted ship waste, littering of beaches and runoff from the terrestrial dumping of population centres. Once in the environment, these plastics are at the mercy of a convoluted system of currents that can transport them vast distances and onshore winds can push a portion of this debris back to shore. However, debris that is taken on these currents often accumulates in colossal gyres, where they can then slowly form larger and larger clusters that eventually sink to the bottom of the ocean, while low pressure systems occur in the southern hemisphere and tend to disperse material and force it to the surface. The North Pacific Gyre covers twice the area of the United States, and it is the most heavily researched in the world for plastic pollution. Within it lie the Hawaiian Islands, which brings us to Camillo Beach. I say, Will, have you ever heard of Camillo? I have. In fact, its unfortunate location has made it quite notorious as a dumping ground for the vast quantities of plastic circulating the gyre. To give an idea of scale, Daimron et al. in 2002 predicted that annual strandings on the Hawaiian Islands were in the region of 52 metric tons, and this is a fraction of what remains in the gyre. What's more is that in 2010, following a survey of the area the previous year, Industrial fishing tags from an Oregon fishery reportedly lost in 2006 were discovered on the beaches of Hawaii just four years later. This demonstrates the immense distances and timescales involved in the circulation of marine plastics. In 2009, a team of volunteers cleaning up fishing line and netting along the 4.5 km stretch of Camilo Beach managed to collect over 45 metric ta tons of tackle alone. The sheer scale of the quantity of waste washing ashore here is astonishing. My god, Will! Oh, what the hell can we do? People are dying! Well, unfortunately, there is no steadfast solution. Instead, changes in our culture must be made and reinforced with effective education programs. Steps will also have to be made in the way that we regulate the transport and disposal of plastic materials, with sanctions enforced effectively on those who fail to meet these standards. But let's not forget, Will, we can also take the initiative and ramp up efforts to develop more biodegradable materials in hope to someday phase out the usage of harmful petroleum-based plastics, as until mankind can overcome its dependence on ruthlessly exploiting and polluting the natural world, we will never prevail against the dark, and in some cases translucent, plasticky, polymerized overlords that we call pollution. This will take a global effort, but golly gee, I have faith that humanity can prevail. Stands on golden sand and watches the ships that go sailing somewhere beyond the sea. She's there watching for me. This will take a global effort, but golly gee, I have faith in the two. Uh,